This is Red Sox Review, and it starts right now. Here's your host, K.J. Carson. So Gasper walks. So he's had, what, uh, three walks and a strikeout. Need to get him the first one. And so, I think with the roster the way it is, he's going to hang around as the third catcher. So that's an 875 OBP. <laughs> Hard to beat that. He batted for Yoshida. Here's a ground ball to deep short. Off the bat of Jansen. Throw to second out. On to first. Double play. And that will do it. Mercy. Final. Arizona 12. Boston 2. Red Sox review with KJ. Thank you so much for being here. How can I best put this? I, I, I guess the analysis I have to use when I see the Red Sox come home and they're what? Four games under 500 at home, but yet the best team in the league in all of major be league be baseball away from home is it feels like I'm watching a Little League World Series game. It's going on at the same time now, and I don't know if you watch this stuff. You're like, KJ, it's Red Sox Review, but let me just break it down to you. Little League games are six innings. So let's just say tonight's game going into the top of the sixth, how would you feel about the Red Sox? Not completely bad, right? You're like, okay. Okay, you gave up three at the top. It's a 5-2 game. You feel like maybe they can knock themselves back into this game, but... It's that sixth inning. It's those middle innings. Forget that the score is 12-2. I'll get to my notes here shortly. But I, I, I just, I hate the roller coaster of seeing you win two out of three against Houston, who's one of the hottest. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost a 30-for-30 30 30 story of just how bad they were at the start of the year. Like, almost like, do they have garbage cans again to make that, that run the way they have? They just lost their road winning streak tonight. But then you're like, okay, Fenway Park should be one of the parks where it's a home field advantage for the home team, and it just has not been. The literal difference between being in that last wild card spot and where the Red Sox are right now are the four games that would at least if they were if they were 500 at home, they would be tied for the last spot in the right in the wild card. Four games. So I Part of it, I think, and I, I just attribute it to this, and we'll get more into this, is this is why the acquisition of some more veterans sooner than later, clearly you can't do it now, is where you're going to have situations where base is loaded and you're not swinging at pitch one, two, and three, especially if pitch one is way inside, two is kind of high, and three you go after, which is out of the zone. That's probably a difference. You saw it with Romy Gonzalez last week in that series against the Orioles. Base is loaded. You're going after the first pitch and popping it up. 617-779-7937. Text line 37937. KJ Red Sox review. We'll go through the game, your calls, your text as well. But right now it's time to trend. This is Red Sox review on WEEI. First and third with one out. Bayo delivers. Suarez rips it into left field. That's down for a hit. And because of the error, Guriel's allowed to trot on home and score. It is 3-1 Arizona. He never would have scored from second on that. It was hit so hard. KJ here on WEEI Red Sox Review. Brought to you by Nissan. Hurry in and save big on a new Nissan at the Nissan end of summer sales event. Shop your local Nissan store at NissanUSA.com. I wonder if they have a Duran special. I, I want something with speed, but yet flexibility with four doors, like a double. Like, I can fit more people in there. Red Sox lose 12-2. to two. I'll get into where my notes just cut. They just fall off a cliff where I'm like, you know what? These guys are cooked. 617-779-7937. Text line 37937. Let's go to David. David, thanks for calling into Red Sox Review. You're on the air. Hello, David. Hello. Yes, go ahead. You're on the air. Uh, yeah, uh, first, uh, Flora waited too long to uh, to pull. I, I waited a, a pitch or two too late, too late to pull on Bayo. Uh, it was he went was five and a one. third. <laughs> like, what are we? That's yeah, why I was saying about with little league. It's like. 
hey, at Little League, you know, you pull your guys in the third inning because of pitch restriction or you could feel the energy going. But, I mean, you pull them at five and a third, like like how much earlier can you pull somebody? Well, I mean, he didn't take – I mean, he had that bone-headed play uh, when he fielded the front, but a little comebacker. Yeah. And then he threw out uh, – I mean, he, and then he – I mean, he, didn't even, he wasn't even ready. He wasn't even prepared to start the game because they should have scored ten runs in the first inning yeah. off him. Uh, I mean, I don't know what the guy does before this pregame ritual. I mean, he, he's not mentally prepared. He just—he he doesn't come to the game on his on his game days mentally prepared. I don't D- think he does. Thank you, th- thank I you mean, for the call, David. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't necessarily disagree with David because in my notes I wrote, "Bayo throw to first, shook." Now he's coming out of the game. Like the hesitation is the start of everything that went bad. It's it's like watching a Tarantino movie. You're like, oh. It's it's like when Uma show, uh, Uma Thurman shows up to uh, Vivica Fox's house. It's, it's a girl fight, you know it. And sure enough, like that has it, like rather to hold the ball and keep it at first and st- second instead of uh, first and third, all right, with the runner advancing. And you just heard the play. What what would end up happening next? The very next batter drives in the run from third. So starts the carnival. Uh, it, it it becomes ugly. It it gets out of hand. There's no reason. In Major League Baseball. Now, maybe in the Little League World Series, that there should not be 10 runs given up in the last three innings. 10 runs? 10. 617-779-7937. Let's go to AJ and Dover. AJ, thanks for calling WEEI Red Sox Review. You're on the air. Hi, how's it going? Good, thanks for the call. Thank you. I love listening to the review. Usually on a win, though, I'm not really excited about the loss tonight. But I do want to have a little bit of uh, optimism. I, I, I don't know how you feel, but I looked at the last three series, as in Baltimore, Houston, and Arizona, before we got a softball on our schedule. And I saw us at 5-5 five and five as, like, treading water. And so even with the loss tonight, not going to blow my gasket, even if we split the last two games and don't win the series. Uh, I still feel a little bit optimistic that in the stretch run, we're looking up at the teams and we still got a shot. I think that we have more of a shot versus the Twins because it just seems like whoever's in front of the Royals are just knocking them down. And they did exactly what we were supposed to do this offseason. The last caller, Jay, was talking about Bayo, Alex, and Crawford. That's why you needed to supplement those guys with a couple of veterans to walk up pitch here before he was serviceable. He's a veteran. Yeah, AJ, yeah, thanks dude. for the call. I total, I, 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 I mean, I agree. I mean, well, well here's where I kind of disagree, though. Like, those series that you mentioned where you're like, oh, my gosh, they're, they're on the road. And so one of two things, I thought one thing would happen and the other thing would fade. I thought the Red Sox would be able to get that record closer to 500 and past 500 at home because guess what? You've got a competing team. You've got a home base that's anxious for you to be there. Like this wasn't the story earlier in the year. And you're not winning these games at home. So how are you going to expect this team to just stay hot on the road? They are the best team in the major leagues in away games, but yet we're talking about a team that's four games out of the wild card situation. You mentioned the Twins and you mentioned the Royals. You know what? You, and, and I'll throw the Indians as well in the conversation because they're all really grouped together. It's probably the most fascinating race in baseball right now, and usually AL Central baseball isn't really exciting. But all of them get to chew up on the White Sox, who are probably going to get to their 100th loss by the middle of next week. So with the Red Sox, only 16 of their next 34 games are on the road. So if you say all things considering where the Red Sox more likely to win more games and where they're, the, where they're more likely to lose more games, you would say at best maybe this is a 500 team down the stretch based on their home games, which they're under 500, and their away games, which they're way over 500. Like it's 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 it was an out, it's called an outlier, right? Like. If you're if you've won 38 games on the road, 
you should not only have 29 wins at, at, at home. 29, you should, you should be like 20 or 30 and 30, 29, 30 or 30 and 34. Like, like that's, and, and this is what, and this is what the caller saying. I agree. That feels like there's a lack of focus. Like just because you slept in your bed last night doesn't mean you have to do your job less harder. I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'm just showing the record shows that you're worse at home than you are on the road. Like why not take some of that on the road magic and apply it at home? 617-779-7937. Let's go to Carl and Lawrence on Red Sox Review with KJ WEEI. Good evening to you, Carl. KJ, Carl, uh, we're out here in Warren and people are, are asking them, if you're forgetting this offense and this team is the second best overall. And ironically, their catcher, two of their best hitters and another key player, they're all injured right now. So this is like a softened version of them. And they still went out and shelled us. I mean, right off the rip in the first inning, load them up and walk in a run. It wasn't looking too pretty. We held on to the sixth inning, and then the bottom fell out, like you said, at the end of the game. Not going to be a day every day at a parade, but this was a rough loss after pounding Houston twice at home. Well, thanks for the call, Carl. But at some point, you have to decide which carts are where in the parade, right? 30-something games remaining. You have to figure the Twins have remained. They've been consistent. Kansas City's been consistent. If there's one thing I thought about, Kansas City was like, oh, maybe they'll just run out of gas. They're not a very good team against 500 teams, but neither are the Red Sox. Teams above 500. And so now the Red Sox are seeing teams above 500. That's why the Houston series felt so good. Because you're like, as bad as it felt after game one with, with, with Kenley Jansen giving up that home run, after Diaz gets whispered something from Jordan Alvarez after three straight strikes, you're like, do they just whisper now and not knock the garbage cans? Because, like, they're like, how does that happen? And then you win two straight in Houston, and then you come home, you feel like, hey, can we get some of that energy that you got from on the road in Houston and apply it at home? I mean, you kind of had some famous people in the house tonight to watch the Red Sox because you feel like, if they can continue that run from Houston, win two out of three in this series, they still can. And keep in mind, this feeling that I have right now could be very well the same that I had with Kenley Jansen giving up the home run to start the Houston series. The only if the only difference is, is the Twins keep winning. The Royals keep winning. Uh, Seattle's not in the picture anymore. They just fired their manager. So it's like, it's literally the Red Sox single assignment. Like the Red Sox don't really have to worry about anybody else but the Red Sox. And when you're at that point, you have to ask yourself, are you thinking of yourself if you're Bayo, why is it not better to hold on to that ball because it's still probably going to be a hit. But once you let it go, now you've got now you've got a, a, at least one man in scoring in position and it's less than 2 outs. So even with that bad throw Let's say the, this, you don't even. Let's say you don't make the throw. You still have a chance for the double play. And you saw some really good defense from the team early in the game, so you felt like okay, going back to the first inning, uh, the play by uh, by by Hamilton to get that second out, and then the the pick that you know that that Devers makes to, to get the third out to get him out of what would have been a further jam. You're like okay, I believe this defense isn't going to leak. Now you've got like little line drive, and, and let's just call it this. Uh, Raphael, give him a whole spring training to be the shortstop and see if you can get goods for Trevor Story right now. I would start I would start the video campaign right now. You know, big serene music and showing highlights from Colorado. I'd even do charts of like, man, put this guy in a little bit of, we're at sea level, or just about um, uh, eight feet above sea level in the park. Man, you put him in a little higher, this guy can do something for you. Because while you appreciate the effort that you're getting from these young guys, you feel like veteran decisions are being missed on the field, whether it be at the plate or even, you know, someone in a situation with Bayo. It's like, okay, hold that ball. You still have a chance to get out of the inning without giving up any runs because the double play was still in effect. Uh, I'm trying to think my producer's name right now. Nico, can you play what happened when the fourth run was scored for me? Oh, and two. Here's the pitch. Swinging a high drive, real trouble into left center field. Back toward the monster, and it's off the green. Oh. One run scores, and they will hold 
Suarez at third. It's a double off the monster for Guillaume, and it's 4-1 Diamondbacks. Straight out that of. may do it for Bale. Straight out of Little League. Nico, do you, you watch Little League World Series at all? On occasion. On I love occasion. the player captions, like for. Um, Their favorite emoji. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, they're. You know what I find very interesting? Because I was watching Chinese Taipei versus Japan. And okay. I was always, yeah, I was watching that game because I'm figuring like, you know, these, this might be the odds on favorite here. I mean, I don't mean to get away. We still, we're talking a little bit baseball. But in that game, it got to a point where if we can get them into a psychological disadvantage, or maybe it was the Latin America, it was the Latin America, uh, Cuba game. That's where it happened, where things are tight. Things are tight. Mess with their head. Blow it. They lose the game. You feel like with the Red Sox, you're like, okay, you tell me the Red Sox are in a 2-1 game after five innings. I would say it's just a matter of time for the Red Sox bats to come alive. Unless something happens with the pitching, and now all of a sudden the Red Sox are finding themselves, say, down, I don't know, 5-1 after five. Now you're like, okay, you've got a shorter window of time for the Red Sox to really be able to get live with their bats. That's why when Ref Snyder hits the solo home run, it, it, it was almost like, you know, does a tree does do it when a tree falls in the woods? Does it make a sound? Because you feel like by that point, and at and that point, it made it five two. So you're still like, okay, this isn't the worst thing in the world, but still, things still have to happen. And then you give up four runs again. And then you get four runs in the sixth. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if you just heard my back pop through the mic. Just you, you, you know, when you roll your neck, you're just kind of frustrated. You're like, Ugh. and and here's the thing. I, I do have to give the Red Sox a lot of credit for fighting with with pieces that are coming together while nothing is a, other than Devers is a superstar, right? Duran is developing into he's developed into an all-star. Rafael has shown that, you know, what you need from the glove. This is a real candidate for rookie of the year. Tristan Casas has come back. He's hitting over 330 since he's been back. So these are all good signs. But the other part of it is why are signs showing up when you've got a race to get into and you've got to be able to make clear and concise decisions? Like just me, I just put this game squarely on where it went south is the overthrow to first by Bayo. The game never was the same after that. And you say, even just caution, right? In this industry, they say it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. I would not do that on the baseball field. Don't ask for the forgiveness because you may not be forgiven especially what ends up happening next, right? The next two out of three innings, you give up seven runs, seven more runs score, you give up three in the ninth. You know, that's pretty much kind of like a consolation prize for Arizona. But Arizona's not even a time. I think it was David who had just called before. He said, or AJ had just called before. He said, like, Arizona's best players out of Keltel Marte is not there. He's their biggest home run hitter. You got another guy with 23 home runs. He's not there. And they're putting up 12. Like, this is supposed to be a mirror team the Red Sox are looking at. Small ball, station to station, get the run in, try and get two on you quick, then lean on some decent pitching for a few innings, hoping you can get to the bullpen and to the final boss, if you will, if you're an MLB fan. Unfortunately, the bullpen is the issue. 617-779-7937. Let's go to Nick. Nick, thanks so much for calling Red Sox Review with KJ. You're on the air. Hey, how's it going tonight? Good. Thanks for the call, Nick. So you were talking about earlier in the show how the Twins and Royals kind of keep winning. So the Red Sox have 35 games left in the regular season. So I was thinking they're probably going to have to go 23-12 and 12 the rest of the way, which would give the Red Sox 90 wins. Do you believe 90 wins would get the Red Sox into the last wild card spot? Uh, no, but stay for the math. Thank you so much for the call, Nick. So for those who have followed me here on the station, there's a theory called 27 games at a time. Don't get caught up in what's going on. Just look at the game. Look at the season, 27 game clips. You only have to do it six times. If the team goes 15 and 12 over an average, that's 90 wins for the season. So where are the Red Sox? 15 and 11 in April. Mission accomplished. Even though it's 26 games, they got to the 15. In May, 12 and 16, not only failed the mission, but failed the mission by about three games. So they give back two, three games from, from April. 
15 and 10 in June. Okay, so that's kind of like a push. 13 and 11 in July. Failed the mission August right now. They're 10 and 10. I don't see how they get to 90 wins. I, I don't see it. I, what, like I said, what's happened on the road has been an anomaly, but only 16 of their next 34 now games are on the or are, are, are on the road. So I, to get to 90 wins, I don't see how this team can go 23 and 10, 23 and 11 in a clip when I'm not showing you anything that show them even going, say, 19 and 8 in a clip. If you show me something like that over the course of the season, it's like, okay, this team has the ability to get hot, get on a roll, win almost 20 out of 27 games. Very hard to do. Very hard to do. Even if you just upped it to 16 and 11 in each clip. Now you're talking 96 games? We're not having that discussion. So that's the thing is... Should I have patented 27 games at a time? I don't know I would be able to keep the at a time because I get it from one day at a time. But that 27 game at a time is a very good predictor. It's almost like KJ's AI where you could see if this team can't get too many clips of 15s during the course of the season, they're going to struggle to get to 90. 15 in April, 15 in June, 12 in May, 13 in July. Nah. Nah. 10 and 10 now. So could they run off five and two? They'd have to. Like that, that's the conversation. This, this is why I say, like, if this clip, because it's like well, one, two, three, four, five. We're we're now in we're we're in the we're in the final stretch, folks, in this 27 game at a time thing. So if this team can go five and two over their next seven, and that's a real possibility, right? If you you take this series and then you go on the road to Detroit, uh, and then you've got Toronto at home and then at Detroit, you would say, okay, please don't fall asleep against Toronto. And then when you go on the road against Detroit and the Mets, the Mets are going to be a bit tougher. But you figure like by September 1st, you should be able to, and teachers will tell you, by September, but by April 1st, we know if you're going to be passing or failing this class, whether in college. You, know, you, go, you remember that in college. You tiptoe to the teacher, to the professor. And, uh, well, and I just tell you, final grade is uh, worth 20%. <laughs> but meanwhile, your 80% is like a D. <laughs> I was lucky enough not to be in that position. Uh, that's a tough Oh, one you're to be one in. of those brainiacs? Uh, mainly if you showed up to class, you pretty much got everything you need. Well, not at my college. <laughs> my college rolls out people like Jesse Jackson and Ronald McNair. They're not going to give KJ some pass. That's not happening. But that's kind of what's happening, right? Like the, the Red Sox have been doing C-plus work, and they can't expect to go into this final stretch doing C work and getting a B result. Damn, I'm relatable. 617-779-7937, text line 37937. Before we get out of here, we got to hear from Alex Cora and his post game. Thank you so much for hanging out in Red Sox Review with KJ. 617-779-7937, text line 37937. Thank you for hanging out. Everything Boston Red Sox. This is Red Sox Review on WEEI. Bases loaded one down, a three-run lead already for the Snakes. The 1-0 pitch is crushed. High and deep into left field. It is way back, and it is gone. A grand slam over the monster for Eugenio Suarez, and it is 9-2 D-backs. KJ here on Red Sox Review, WEEI. I kind of laughed at myself here. Because Will Fleming felt like a crushed little league father seeing his kid just getting rocked at Will Williamsport and all the kids racing down the hill to come get the ball. I'm sorry. You have to laugh in situations like this. Here's a Diamondbacks team that isn't known for mashing. They're known for station to station, using their speed and playing defense. They put a 12 spot on you. And it is a grand slime. I mean, Will, I mean, he hit that. He hit that emotion perfect and is crushed. Like, damn, they don't serve beer at Little League World Series for the families. I'm kidding. 
617-779-7937, text line. 37937, we're two minutes away from Alex Cora. Let's go to Mike. Mike, thanks for calling Red Sox Review. Uh, good evening to you. Hi, what's going on? You know, I, 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 I can't understand this team in their own building. Well, I say building because I'm thinking of the Bruins, but it, it really is unbelievable how they just, uh, they just, you know, they're so inconsistent in that place. It is unbelievable. But they, they go on the road and, you know, he scored 12 runs in Baltimore. They might not score 12 runs on this whole homestand, although mm. they should again against Toronto, I, I I think. I just don't understand. Endeavors is nowhere near. I don't care. I'll argue the point till I die. He is not a $300 million ball player. The guy this year, I know. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. How many millions would you, would you say? Because it's all based upon what the market is. So what, what, what? A hundred million? What, 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 Well, he, he, he got that because bets went and the shortstop went. So now what are they? They're back into the hole. They, they, they got to sign him. They lost Bogarts and, and, and bets. They had to sign him. Let me ask I you this. Are they getting a better? Player. Is there a better financial deal for the Red Sox with Raphael Devers right now or Trevor Story? Is Trevor Story making too much money? Oh, that that that! What what a joke that was! What a joke! <laughs> I'm just that was. I mean, we're just going to compare numbers, right? So if you're saying that no, he should get well, Story you know, money, I've I've been listening to him since I'm five years old in New Hampshire with my grandfather. And, you know, what do you know at five? You know, then right. I had to watch the Celtics and the Bruins, and so now I got three teams. But anyway, I still haven't got over the Bruins losing to St. Louis yet. I'm still oh, – wow. I, I just I just don't understand how they can play Yeah, they have so these things well. called laptops now. I'm kidding. But, yeah, thank On you so much. For, yeah, thanks so much for the call. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, yeah, without getting into the semantics of who gets paid what, just, oh, just, just imagine, because I joked about this a year ago, I said, you know, the Yankees didn't issue the number 11 after they let that outfielder go. I forgot his name. The little little runty guy that used to always run around. They used to, I think they ended up testing him. I can't remember his name. But they didn't issue that number the next year. I was just like, I bet you somewhere in the shadows they're like, we will give Rafael Devers $350 million to be the shortstop for the Yankees for the next 10, 12 years. And let me tell you what, the conversation would be, you should have paid him. So, look, appreciate what you got. There's a big albatross of contract on the books right now. You're like, okay, Yoshida is starting to get lift on his hits and everything that you would hope he would do coming over from Japan, which is getting that ball to the opposite field instead of the constant 4-3 ground out, that's turning around, and that could have been another problem in terms of what you're paying out. 617-779-7937. Let's go to Alex Kors' post. I mean, the walk's been in the best spot. Four walks. Um, the bun base hit the first one, and then he threw the other way uh, with uh, the other ground ball. So we had we had a few guys with two strikes. We were unable to finish it, but I think you know the, the walks at this level, you do that, and you're gonna pay the price. Look like you know the last two games on the trip, you had eight and third scoreless innings of the bullpen at at five two in the seventh. The, the game was still. Yeah, I cut her in the middle zone. Uh, and he's a dead pull hitter, and he's going to look to do damage with something closer close to him. Uh, he got a cutter in the middle, and he didn't miss it. You know, uh, he's a uh, one of these guys that you look at the numbers, right? Average and all that stuff. He's not not usually up there, but RBIs. That's what he does, and he got a good pitch to hit and, and drove it. What's the uh, concern about with Tyler? Uh, he should be okay. Yeah, it's day to day. Which did the guys offense? A good fastball. We put good at bats. You know, we battle. Uh, they made some good pitches on ref after walking Rafi, right? Um, but you know, I think we 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 battle with him. He, he had a good fastball. Made some pitches with two strikes. So you got to tip your hat to him. During BP, yeah. Inability to kind of get any momentum going at home. How much does that frustrate you to come home after a 
good trip and first game out of the shoot? Yeah, we, today was kind of a blah. <laughs> uh, not much going on, right? So we just got to be ready for tomorrow. It's not like a for pre preparation, you know. It's not that we're preparing different on the road. Uh, but uh, like I said, you know, we got to figure out here and uh, start playing good baseball at home. We're good. Thank you. <laughs> we're good. I would slap my thing, too, because it's like when you can see when a game that was in the balance gets away from you, it can only be frustrating. And then imagine being down 9-2 and the crowd burst into Sweet Caroline. So good. so Really so good? It was a grand slam last inning. <laughs> like I said, if the Red Sox can go 5-2 and two over their next seven, there may be a conversation where you could say, hey, there's a chance for them to still be in it. They'll get back into their sweet spot, which would be away games. They go at Detroit. They ha they go on the road to the Mets. So, like that. So, here's the good thing about it, because I don't want to seem as like a Debbie Downer, though I don't know if that's like offensive to call it a Debbie Downer. Can it be a Dan Downer? Just to equate things. But... We're talking about the Red Sox trying to figure out if they can get to the playoffs in September. Were we having this September 1st? Were you thinking that February 1st, March 1st? No. Think about what the conversations were during the winter meetings. I mean, during the winter, winter fest. <laughs> I mean, they were doing stuff behind curtains. They just didn't want to see fans. So I appreciate the fans because you always want to tap somebody on the shoulder. Like, did you think you'd be here this late in the season? All the jokes were coming. Wait till the students are going to be the ones buying up all the tickets. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. So hats off to management for saying, okay, we've been able to put something together to get Alex Cora to stay. We feel like we have pieces that are for the future. But at the same time, <laughs> how soon is now, damn it? All right. Cutter Crawford, Zach Galen. Tomorrow, 4 o'clock, the game is here. Oh, gosh. Zach Galen in the shadows? <laughs> no. Also, keep an eye on yeah, Raphael Devers. Something happened with his hand in the game today. Hopefully, he will be healthy enough. He's going to have to be big tomorrow, especially on the left side of the plate. Gallon is no joke. Thank you so much to Nico Manganelli for your work. Um, I'll be here for Red Sox review tomorrow afternoon. Surprise, surprise. Have a great Friday evening here. Oh, W-E-E-I. See ya.